Good evening, YouTubers. Welcome back in to another edition of Astro's Recap. Happy belated 4th of July to all of those of you watching out there. It is 10.49 p.m., so it's about right. Time, place, like I mentioned earlier, did talk to you on Wednesday from a mid, uh, my uh, mid-season report. Um, talked about you getting through 81 games. Astro's obviously in that... <laughs> That day, after being swept by the Orioles, they weren't in a great uh, spot. Well, still in first place, things like that. But just, I mean, after losing or getting swept <clears throat> at home by Baltimore, the worst team in the American League, that was sort of a low point of the year. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. But, yeah, I go back to, obviously, early in the year, and the Astros lost, you know, 9 of 10, where they got swept by D Detroit, uh, Colorado, struggled against Seattle in between there and they were in a stretch of where they had lost 9 of 10 that was sort of a bad stretch and then obviously losing 3 there Ashes did bounce back though they go to Cleveland they, they sweep uh, Cleveland all 4 games so uh, that was nice to see to bounce back the way they did so they're actually uh, tied uh, in terms of their best uh, overall record with 19, 19 games over 500 at 52 and 33 and have now a three and a half game lead in the AL West. So things in that regard are looking good. Um, but yeah, four game set here was huge. Obviously, you go in. Uh, Cleveland, a respectable, not great, but respectable team. Um, hoping to win three or four is usually the goal there, just winning series. I never like to go into series expecting sweeps, obviously. Uh, every series is just trying to win two or three or three or four. It's usually the goal. So. Whenever you can get sweeps, that's always, you know, to finish off a team and really, you know, put the nail in the coffin is 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 uh, important, as, as important as winning the series, I feel like. So, and the Astros had their struggles this year winning or, you know, finishing off teams when they had the opportunity to sweep them. So, uh, the fact that they get the sweep and they've actually done a little bit better uh, there was nice. Obviously, sweeping Baltimore and uh, a few teams. Let's see here if I can look at this. So, Obviously, they had their 11-game winning streak snapped by the Tigers after the uh, off day or the uh, postponement on Friday. But prior to that, they had swept Texas in a short two-game set in Chicago in the four-game set and then Baltimore for three, uh, winning the opener against Detroit. We covered a lot of that um, last Sunday. So I did briefly go over the Baltimore series. Astros losing all three, of course. Um, so I won't go in depth here, obviously. Um, yeah, Monday was the close game. They fell behind late in the game. These three games, I might have mentioned this last week. If I do, I apologize for being redundant here. But um, each game took like at least four hours. First game was four and a half hours. And, you know, usually I don't mind sitting through a game that takes that long as long as we get the win. But each game took like four, at least four hours in each game they lost, which was just like, yeah, there's nothing worse than that. But this this series just was bad all around. There's no two ways about it. Um, so, yeah, they, they lose on Monday 9-7. to seven. It actually was worse than the final score. They, they scored some runs in the ninth inning to make it close. But, uh, you know, we gave up five in the top half of the ninth. Um, Brandon Belak was... Just completely awful. Um, Brandon Belak's not a guy that's going to be here um, long term. I mean, he's spent the majority of the year on the major league roster. In fact, I think he's been on the team. I don't think they've ever sent him down. Um, so we'll we'll wait and see there. Um, but yeah, Belak, he's got an ERA over six now, and he I think gave up all five of those runs there in the ninth inning. Um, I mean, he got, he got four outs, but four hits, five runs, all of them earned. Did strike out three, walked a batter, but just overall was pretty, he was terrible. Um, yeah, Granky only goes five, and usually, you know, if your <clears throat> starter can only go five innings, you're not going to be set up for, uh, unless you're up, you know, five, six runs, you're really not going to, you know, get very far. 
and the Astros were actually losing at that point, three to two. So, um, but it was tied. I mean, going into the ninth, it was tied at you know four four. <clears throat> but Belak happened, gave up five runs. The Astros did rally and made things close, but they do lose that game nine to seven. Uh, Ralph Garza had to come in and actually finish off the ninth, getting two outs. Uh, did allow a hit, but he got out of it. Ralph Garza Jr., not terrible. I mean, ERA 4.70 for him. Um, yeah, I mean, Andre Scrub came in. Scrub was actually decent, did walk a hitter. Also struck out a batter. His ERA is obviously inflated at 7 point, <clears throat> 7 point 07 because uh, he had a bad stretch there. They brought him back up now, so Scrub is here. Uh, Blake Taylor got in an inning, but he gave up an earned run. Taylor's not that good. The ERA is not terrible at 3.45. But Blake Taylor's not the guy we thought he was last year. He's just not. Him and Enoli Paredes, two guys last year that, you know, made you think, you know. I got a weather warning on my phone. I don't know. But Blake Taylor and, yeah, you know, Paredes, two guys last year that, you know, you thought thought you had something going here uh, really didn't really didn't pan out the way we were hoping this year. So, I mean, both of them really um, just not not great options there in the bullpen. Nobody is, really, unless you're looking, you know, certain spots. Obviously, Presley's good. Um, we'll talk about Stanek here in a little bit. Um, but, yeah. So losing that 9-7, to seven, obviously. I'm not going to go really in-depth here. 3-1. to one. No, wait. They lose Tuesday 13-3. to three. So, I mean, when you lose by 10 runs at home to the worst team, uh, Baltimore putting up five. The, the game was pretty ha pretty much in hand. Well, not totally in hand. Um, let's see. I'm trying to look at the score here. It was, it was 4-3 to three going into the top half of the eight. The Astros were down. Um, so the relievers here really just, you know, made it out of reach. And those people, uh, Ryan Stanek here, really struggled. Uh, four hits, five earned runs, two walks, two strikeouts, and only an inning of work. Ballooned his ERA to 4.59. I believe going into that, it was actually at like three and a half. So, yeah, that went up a full run there. Blake Taylor came in, gave up two hits, struck out a guy, but no runs on his line. And then Robel Garcia. Position player, utility, infielder, uh, just to save the bullpen, worked the ninth, and he gave up four and runs uh, on his line. But, yeah, Robel Garcia, he's a position player. At that point, the game was in hand. So, Urquidy gets hurt in this game, only going in an in, inning in the third. He got four outs. Uh, so, yeah, another recipe for disaster, uh, but had to use Scrub. Scrub actually, again, he pitched, he, you know, got the ERA under six. <laughs> Uh, he did, you know, walk three guys, struck out two. I need to just take my phone off the charger because this yet yeah, isn't going to work. Uh, Brooks Raley, inning he gave up an earned run. Raley's gone back to who he was before, basically giving up runs in almost every outing here. Um, Ralph Garza actually gets credit for the loss here. Um, ERA's under five, four point eight two, but gave up a hit and earned run. He actually struck out three. He got five outs in the game. And then Stanek and, and Stanek and Robel Garcia really put the game out of reach. But by the time, Ro, 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 time Robel Garcia actually pitched, the game was already pretty much, pretty much over. Uh, but 13-3 to three there. Um, and then 5-2 to two on Wednesday. And by, by the time Wednesday came, Luis, Luis Garcia got the start. Obviously, it wasn't great. Uh, he was also... Squeezed a little bit, strike zone. The you know he didn't didn't get some calls early in the game. I don't really like to you know blame the umpire. It was C.B. Buckner behind the plate, but he definitely missed some pitches that probably were strikes. Uh, so I mean he gave up four in the first half. You know the top of the first um, threw like 44 pitches. So he actually got through four, which was actually better than what you would expected after the first inning. Uh, Belak came in. Actually, was scoreless in his inning of work. Javier got an inning in two thirds, walked two hitters, struck out three. He's going to walk guys. That's who Javier is. And then a the guy they called up Hartman actually went two 
two and a third to close out that game and save others. He gave up an earned run, but that game, by the time you got to game three, it just had the feeling of the Astros weren't going to, they were just going to, yeah, let Baltimore sweep them. So anyway, yeah, get swept there, obviously. You got four more games here until your first day off as you go to Cleveland. And the Astros, yeah, do a good job. Uh, really the big hit. So the Astros needed something big early on. And I'll put my phone down for this and just try to go off what I remember, what I know. I'll have to look at the box score for a few things here in a second. But they needed something like a big hit. Obviously, you know, we needed Baltimore out of, out of the city. And we needed to hit the road. We needed something to change. Um, obviously, only losing four games in a row. It's not like you've lost ten or something like that. But it was good to leave in a park and get rid of Baltimore, which is weird to say. Most teams want Baltimore to stay around so they can continue to beat up on them, but that wasn't the case. So we go to Cleveland. We actually fall down early in this game 2 nothing as uh, Framber Valdez gets the start here on Thursday. And, um, you know, Jordan hit a home run to make it 2-1, to one, but I think it was the Altuve grand slam in this game that really uh, – that big hit, whether it was a big home run, a bases clearing double, that grand slam I felt like got things going. And the Astros, you know, Brantley hit a home run and they bounced back and won a pretty a non-competitive game, seven to two, I believe, was the final in that one. Yeah, uh, but Fromber gutted out seven innings. Didn't have his best stuff, but that's sort of a mark of a good pitcher when you're sort of struggling. But he got through seven, and Dusty let him ride 107 pitches. But he walked five guys. That's, you know, old Frommers. He used to walk a bunch of guys, struck out six, 200 runs, 2.18 ERA, and five and one on the year. Peter Solomon, who I didn't even know was actually, you know, on the roster, so there was some corresponding move, but Peter Solomon got through the eighth inning, didn't allow a run, but he did give up two hits, walked a guy. And then Presley, who hadn't pitched since the previous Sunday, got in to get, you know, some work. And he was one, two, three with two strikeouts. So Presley, uh, yeah, got the job done there. That was a nice bounce back for the Astros. Um, Friday they win six to three. They were up six to nothing in this game, so they had a lead. They scored two in the second, I believe, thir three, uh, four in the third. Uh, the big home run they gave up was Brook Brooks Raley's doing, as um, they brought they took out. Who pitched this game? Actually, now I'm thinking about it. Yeah, when this thing doesn't want to work, it's really... It's always when I'm on these podcasts that the phone just doesn't want to load correctly. But I was actually watching this game. We were out eating, and we were sitting at the bar area. And uh, it was 6 to nothing. but Brooks Raley came in and just absolutely gave up a long home run that made it 6-3. to three. The Astros were able to hold on. Um, Stanick came in. I know... Uh, it was like six, the sixth inning or something along those lines here. Let's see if I can get this here. Is this is this thing isn't even loading correctly. It's like a bad spot of the house. I feel like like this spot in the house is terrible for like Wi-Fi. I feel like. So that's a reason for it. away from this a load. But they did win this game. I know that, you know, obviously it would have been nice to add on some runs there. Uh, but they still won by three. Presley does get the save. I know Blake Taylor struggled in his inning, but it was it was scoreless, but he loaded the bases. Again, Blake Taylor's not going to be a big arm in this bullpen. I just, I, I've lost all faith there. Um Trying to think who else, you know, Rayleigh came in. Stanick actually worked a scoreless inning as well, uh, but sort of piecing together the bullpen there. Um, who, who started this game? I'm trying to think. Who's after Fromber on the rotation? Because Odorizzi pitched Saturday, so it wasn't him. I think it was, it was Lance, Lance McCullers, yeah. So Lance was good, but he worked only five and a third. So again, you know, you need what, 11? What is it? Thing. Yeah, you need 11 outs by your bullpen. Yeah, I mean, you're up six runs, so you feel fine. Uh, but, you know, 
Obviously, I think Lance gets uh, credited or he's charged 200 runs on the Rayleigh home run he gave up. But, yeah, Brooks Rayleigh just isn't going to be a consistent guy. I mean, you had the nice stretch there, but he's falling back, and he's just not hes not going to—he's not a big arm in your bullpen. Dusty loves Brooks Rayleigh for some reason. I don't understand it, but, I mean, again, Dusty has a tough job because if it's not Presley— you're really rolling the dice with the other options you got. Now, Stanek has shown us more so than others that he can actually get through uh, innings and you can actually use him. I mean, he hasn't been as rock solid as he was the first month, month and a half of the year, but he has been better. Like, he's a guy you would trust, and if it doesn't work out, well, okay. I mean, Stanek's not the worst, you know, option right now. The Astros need somebody else that can work a 7th or 8th inning and actually get big outs in big situations, and they don't have that right now. So, obviously that needs to be addressed at some point, trade deadline. It's not going to be a big name because the Astros just don't have the assets to give away to get a big name, but they need somebody that they can find. You know, Ryan Presley was a huge find that one year. As I look at myself and the... All right, things cleared up there. <laughs> but, yeah, they need to find somebody. It doesn't have to be a huge name, just a guy that they can sort of rely on to get big, big outs. I don't know who it is. I don't know what team. I can't give you a whole buyer's and seller's market at this point because there's still a lot of teams, you know, back and forth. Uh, they don't necessarily need a closer because I feel fine with Presley. But, you know, obviously I, I've said I'd, I'd love Presley in the eighth inning more so. And I don't want to go off on a tangent here because, you know, they did win this game and they've won four in a row and they just swept the Indians. But uh, the reliever role, uh, setup-wise, will need to be addressed here uh, at some point. So, as the phone still is being stupid here. I'm just going to try to turn off this Wi-Fi altogether. We'll see. But, yes, they do win the game 6-3. Can't be too upset. Saturday, uh, these two games were actually, they, they, they were close games Saturday and Sunday. They won both by one run. Astros' record in one, running, uh, one run games obviously isn't good. Um, but Saturday's game showed me a lot. They're playing these games. I mean, Saturday, they really had nobody in the lineup. I mean, they were that, without Altuve, Brantley, uh, Jordan's on paternity lead. A paternity lead. They didn't have Tucker. They really had nobody in the lineup to really lean on. But they do were able to eke out three runs. Uh, they scored a run early. Uh, hit home runs. Uh, Correa had an RBI single, I believe, early in the game, which put him on the board. Also, he hit a home run. Abraham Toro also hit a home run. Uh, Toro's just, again, he's hanging in there right now. But you give him, you know, 100 at bats, he'll hit maybe 200 if you're lucky. Um, that was all they could score, though. I mean, the uh, Oda Rizzi went five, six innings. I think he went six innings, and then this was a nice seven-eight combination that Dusty used here. He went Stanek in the seventh, Javier in the eighth, Presley in the ninth, and that was as good as it gets. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And I definitely liked the way he used Javier in this situation because Javier had been used more to get, you know get through two, three, four innings, but he used him as a setup guy in the one inning, and I brought this up in previous podcasts, I want to see Javier use more as a setup reliever, and this is the way he got used, and things work perfectly, so I'll give Dusty Major credit uh, for Saturday's game and the way he sort of maneuvered uh, the bullpen into getting the final line outs there, and also, even more shocking, I didn't think Presley would come into the game in the ninth inning because, you know, Dusty falling into the uh, new school way of managing, A.J. Hinch way of managing. A.J. Hinch way of managing is any reliever that pitched two days in a row was unavailable for, for his third day. Um, but Dusty used Presley for his third day in a row. I applaud that. I like that. I think that should be more. Obviously, if you pitch three days, uh, I give him the fourth day off, but you shouldn't have this automatic rule where a guy pitches two days in a row, he can't pitch a third. I just don't like that rule. Go to your best reliever, even if even if he's you know a little overworked. You know if he gives up runs and blows it, you're okay with that rather than 
using another guy that you're, you know, it's clear as day he can't get the outs. So. But Odorizzi gets the win there, so he's, you know, five, I think he's 3-3 three and three now, 500. I can't double check because I phone still won't load here. See if I put it over here, maybe it'll start to load a little bit. But, um, yeah, it was a good one, one to get today. Again, without a lot of guys. Altuve back in the lineup. Brantley's struggling with some side soreness or something. I'm not sure exactly what it is. Jordan's still not back. Kyle Tucker, I don't know what he's dealing with. He's not in the lineup. So you're playing people like Taylor Jones, you know, in the outfield. And, of course, Toro and Rebel Garcia. And, you know, also Martin Maldonado is not here either. So, obviously, Jason Castro is better with the bat. Uh, but Maldonado is your, you know, he's your catcher. He's your everyday guy, basically. Uh, but Castro is getting more playing time as well. So, but, I mean, yeah, you don't have a lot of guys. You get Altuve and you know, Correa up the middle of the diamond there. But uh, McCormick, you've seen a lot more McCormick without Brantley. Miles Straw out there in center. But the lineup right now is it's slim pickings right now. Um, but the Astros again, they 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 work it out and they they get another one today, four to three, four to three. The game went extra innings. The Astros actually, I think we're up three to nothing at one point. You know, McCormick had an RBI single and a two-run home run, which gave them their three runs. And Granky pitched today. Granky actually gave up, uh, pitched into the eighth inning. So he's efficient as pitch count, but he actually gave up the game tying home run. Uh, and you're actually pitching today's game without, you know, the likes of Presley or Stanek, really, as Dusty wanted to give them days off, um, which in this case I actually understand and I'm okay with. Uh, but again, you know, you're a tie game late in the game. Who are you looking to get outs? And, you know, your offense has to show up. They were helped actually in the 10th inning. Obviously, your leadoff runner at second base. I believe it was uh, Guriel who struck out, but it was a it was a pass ball. So Miles Stroll, who was your runner at second, got to third, and Guriel got to first. So even though he struck out, it sort of worked out. Um, but then there was a ground ball. I'm trying to think who was up next. I think Correa hit a grounder to third base. Miles Stroll broke for home plate, was thrown out, got into a rundown. Uh, but that, that gave him an output runners at first and second. But then there's a Castro was up at this point, I believe. He actually had a ground ball at first. Uh, wasn't the easiest double play. It wasn't hardly hit. Uh, you know, the uh, timing of it wasn't perfect for Cleveland. Obviously, the first, third, uh, the first baseman fielded it, but he was well, you know, far enough from first to where he couldn't field it, make a throw, and actually get back to cover. So... He made the throw to second. The second baseman sort of double clutched, but with the pitcher covering first, he actually couldn't catch it. It was an error on the pitcher, clearly. It was a catchable ball, uh, but it sort of got away, um, rolled into foul territory, and Guriel with the heads up base running actually scored from second on that play to score the fourth run. And then Brooks Raley in the uh, bottom half of the tenth there. Obviously, with their leadoff runner second, uh, their first hitter actually tries to bunt, uh, but he popped it up. Rayleigh was able to catch it and then fire it to second to get a double play as the runner was too far off. Uh, so that was nice, and then he struck out the, uh, the the batter to close out the game, get the save there for Rayleigh. So a uh, little little bit uh, of uh, you know, obviously the Indians defensively struggled due to the pass ball in the air by the pitcher in the tenth, but. You'll take the win anyway. You can get it on the road that way uh, to get the sweep. So that was nice, and I'm feeling better. You're 52 and 33, three and a half game lead. Oakland lost two or three, or it might have been three or four actually to um, the Red Sox over the weekend. So the team is better than the Astros right now. Uh, Boston, I mean, they're 21 games over 500. So let's see if I can get the standings here. I might be off a little bit on the pitchers things. I, I was going up based of, off what I can remember with those last four games because this wasn't working, but the standings did pull up here. Boston at 53 and uh, 32, so they're 
I'm kind of waiting for Boston to fade, but they're not doing it. So Boston might be, you know, just a surprise team, and they might be for real here. I mean, they they're they're getting pitching and doing enough offensively. They're 53 and 32, so they have the best record in the American League. Astros have the second best record there, as Tampa Bay has fallen a little bit. Uh, the White Sox lost two in a row there, so. But yeah, the White Sox are the next closest team at 49 to 34 now. Over in the National League, um, you still got San Francisco. I think they're playing actually right now, which is strange. It's, it's funny now all this stuff pulls up. San Francisco do here today. They won. So they're 50. Hold on, I'm not looking at this right. There's, they might still be playing here. Or not. Let's see, what did San Francisco do? They won. So San Francisco, the Giants with the best record all baseball, 53 and 30. Another surprise team. Sort of waiting for them to favor. That might not happen. Um, and the Dodgers also are better. So, get three teams in that division that will probably make the playoffs with the Dodgers, the Giants, and the Padres. Padres at 50 and 36. Dodgers at 53 and 31. So San Francisco has them beat by half a game. And then Milwaukee had won 11 in a row. Finally, they lost their 51 and 34. So. Yeah, but all in all, Boston, San Francisco, and L.A., the Dodgers are the three teams better than the Astros in all of baseball. They could take that. Um, but, yeah, three-and-a-half game lead, so just can try to, you continue to try to widen that gap there and, and see what you can do. But it's nice to you know be top in the AL West. Obviously, Oakland winning the division last year, shortened season. Astros did get their revenge knocking them out of the playoffs last year, but... It'd be nice to, you know, get get the division back as the Astros obviously won their division 17, 18, 19. Uh, but, you know, if you can win it this year, four to five years, I think you take that. And knowing last year they didn't win the division, still uh, felt a game shy of going back to the World Series. So things are good, obviously. Day off tomorrow, well-deserved, well-needed for the Astros. They come back home. Uh, big stretch here before the All-Star break. Obviously three with Oakland, so winning two of three there will be sort of the goal, and then you have three with the New York Yankees, that will be an interesting three-game set, I'll be there at the ballpark for Friday and Saturday, uh, most, uh, I'll be there most of the day, both those days, so I'll encounter some of the Yankees fans, obviously, 42 and 41, that's their record on the year, so they've really struggled. And they got some things to figure out here. Uh, with the deadline, you know, a little less than a month away, if they can't turn things around and get themselves into a good spot, they might be, dare I say, sellers, which the Yankees are never sellers, but we'll, we'll wait and see here. But uh, obviously, you try, try to go 4-2. and two, uh, That'll put you 21 games over, and that would be nice to go into the All-Star break like that at 50 Six and 35. <clears throat> so, yeah, if I talk to you next Sunday and they're 56 and 35, I will definitely uh, take that very happily <laughs> into the All Star break. That'll be the goal. But, yeah, right, wrap things up there. Um, and, yeah, hopefully the offense can, you know, uh, being at Minute Maid Park scares me a little after, you know, the debacle with the uh, Orioles, but, you know. Play the A's, and hopefully we can, you know, beat them two out of three and again with the Yankees. So we'll do that. We'll talk to you next Sunday, and we'll head into the All-Star break. But uh, trying to think here. Obviously, Urquidy's on the IL. I think the injury's not as bad as they thought, so I think Urquidy will be okay at some point. We'll wait and see. Uh, you'll get Alvarez back, hopefully, on Tuesday, along with Brantley, Tucker, Maldonado. We'll wait and see, but... I think they'll need some of those guys to actually step up. Uh, you know, be, just be back in the lineup, basically, to beat the Orioles. Um, again, they only scored four runs today. It took innings, ten innings to do it, and three on Friday. Usually it's not necessarily good enough, but the pitching was 
I got enough with Valdez and you know Oda Riz no wait Granky today and Oda Rizzi I believe on Saturday so but yeah I'll wrap things up there right at 30 minutes and we'll talk to you next week see you then